हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई होप यू आर ऑल फिट एंड फाइन एट होम एंड आई रिक्वेस्ट यू टू स्टे बैक एट होम टू स्टे फ्री फ्रॉम एनी काइंड ऑफ कोविड नाइन्टीन इन्फेक्शन लेट एस ओके लेट एस मेक यूज ऑफ दिस लॉकडाउन पीरियड फॉर एनहेंसिंग नॉलेज अबाउट फ्यू टॉपिक्स इन जेनेटिक्स इन दैट रिगार्ड वी शैल स्टार्ट विथ टॉपिक called sex determinants let us try to understand it already i have uploaded the entire notes about this topic before in a group as you people know it and this topic runs through all these points first and the foremost is introduction in this introduction part let us try to know about what we mean by sex what is sexual dimorphism how is that significant we'll see it then uh, later on second point is mechanism or method of determining sex by using the chromosomes of specific type third is specifically in case of drosophila as you know the favorite syndrome of uh, genetics it is a special case where yeah, the method of sex determination is unique and different and this has been properly understood and proposed by a person called dr c b bridges who is happened to be a student of uh, thomas hunt morgan nimgela gotta vishaya then third fourth point that is gynandromorphs and intersexes these are something unusual and uh, different abnormal type of sexes which are not biologically viable much they cannot survive successfully for full span of time and uh, here gynandromorphs means these are the individuals uh, having the sexes like both male and the female in the same body but uh, with respect to the different parts of the body secondly intersexes it is a case where neither it is completely a male nor it is a case of uh, completely female then later on environmental and hormonal effects on sex determination and in this case by knowing the fact that determination of sex is done at the time of fertilization itself at the time of zygote formation itself even during life span the sex could be reversed by the influence or impact of any certain environmental factors like temperature cold or humidity something like that and also by the action of few hormones sex could be reversed during the lifetime of the individual species and lastly that is amniocentesis you are quite familiar with this now ella practical nalli than discuss madidivi that is during karyotyping uh, by using the amniotic fluid from a pregnant lady it is quite possible to determine sex of the or gender of the baby which is not at bond however we'll see all these points one by one today i want to cover up the first and the second point through about eight to nine slides the first one is uh, that is introduction in this case this slides reveal you about certain points like the first and foremost thing is reproduction as you all know it is a biological function by means of this every living organism could continue its life through several number of generations and there are two kinds of reproductions like uh, asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction i am talking about sexual reproduction as it is important from the point of genetics or genetical science and here sexual reproduction will enable the individual to have the genetic recombination that is a reshufflement of genes of both male and the female parents in the progeny or the offspring as you all know it and generally we know amongst the animals and the plants the genders as male and female but still in the lower order plants and the animals there are various number of genders or the sexes for example in case of paramecium there are about eight different sexes or eight mating types we could observe however let us try to focus on the sexual dimorphism as well as sex determination in higher order organisms particularly the animals as you all know sex is not a power of any individual sex is 
derived from a Latin language where sexes means separation, separation with respect to the gender as a male or a female. However, we all know that uh, the male sex or male gender individual will produce the gametes, which are the sex cells, haploid cells. They are said to be like, uh, male gametes are said to be like sperms or the spermatozoa or pollens or microspheres in case of plants. Whereas the female body or the female individual produces female gametes, namely egg or the ovum and uh, in plants, they, they, they are like megaspores or the ovules. You all know that. Let us move on to the next slide directly. Here, after knowing the meaning of sex, let us try to know the most important aspect or the point is sexual dimorphism. Sexual dimorphism is a phenomenon of molecular, morphological, behavioral, and physiological differences between the male and the female individual. Also, you people know that there are two conditions as a monoecious and a diseous. Monoecious is a condition where both male and the female sexes are present in the same body, which are also referred as hermaphrodites. Whereas diseous is opposite condition where the sexes are separate where we are able to differentiate and distinguish or discriminate that this is a male body and this is a female body in every species individual. After knowing this, uh, let us try to come to the point like uh, sexual dimorphism. How is that? How is this made possible biologically? Sexual dimorphism has been a biological riddle curiosity, interest for biologists and the thinkers and out of which they have employed one method of sex determination, sex fixation at the time of birth, sorry, at the time of fertilization itself, at the time of zygote formation itself, Nimgelagotu, gamete, male and the female, sperm and egg, when they unite together, zygote is formed, that's what we call it as fertilization. Zygote as a biological seed, life of every individual begins from that point. At the time of zygote formation itself, it is sex of the future progeny or the offspring's body is determined because chromosomes play an important role as you all know. We know that chromosomes are of two kinds like autosomes and allosomes. Autosomes and the other Autosomes are the chromosomes that carry the genes to express uh, the vegetative or the somatic characters which are same in both male and the female individuals. Whereas uh, allosomes, commonly known as sex chromosomes, they carry the genes uh, for expression of sexual characters only by means of considering set of sexual characters. We are able to differentiate that this is a male body and this is a female body, but it is very much interesting and also a strange thing to know that chromosomes play an important role in determining sex of the individual at the time of zygote formation okay and now chromosome mechanism of sex determination this chromosome chromosomal mechanism means using the chromosomes it is possible to determine sex of the individual at the time of gamete sorry zygote formation itself. There are actually four methods of sex determination. Number one, that is XXXY method of sex determination. Second is XXXO method of sex determination. Third is ZW mechanism of sex determination. And fourth one, that is ZZO mechanism of sex determination. And let us try to understand. This is very simple. These are four methods. Very simple to understand exactly how. Let us do them one by one. First and the foremost is XX, XY mechanism of sex determination. Nimugotu, XX, Andre, this is with reference to the sex chromosomes or the allosomes. You know, we have to consider only the sex chromosomes or the allosomes. Hereafter, I refer. XX or XY as allosomes only. 
you know zygote if it is carrying the xx allosomes then that zygote is made to develop into female only whereas zygote if it is carrying x and y type of allosomes then that zygote would develop into male only that's why it is called as xx xy type of sex determination are you understanding i hope you are following my lecture and if there are any problems in understanding please put me questions later on through uh, sms or by calling and here in this case once a zygote carrying xx chromos allosomes is made to develop into the female only hence it is said to be like homogametic why it is called homogametic because both allosomes are similar or identical as x and x only and whereas the uh, whereas the zygote carrying x one x allosome and one y allosome then that zygote is made to develop into the male individual only however once zygote carrying xx allosome develops into a female after attaining sexual maturity will be able to produce the x or ova of the same type or the single type each each egg or ovum would carry one x allosome and one set of autosomes and for example in case of man suppose if we consider woman sexual sexually mature woman will be able to produce one egg each month you know that and that is a haploid carrying one set of autosomes and only one x allosome not both you all know that so that total number of chromosomes would become 23 instead of 46 similarly a zygote zygote carrying x and y allosome would develop it into a male individual only after attaining sexual maturity male individual will be producing the sperms of two kinds 50 percent of the sperms would carry x allosome and remaining 50 percent of the sperms carry y allosome and finally it depends on i mean gender or sex of the progeny would develop would depend on the type of sperm uniting with the egg for example egg, a sperm carrying x allosome uniting with the egg it would become zygote with x and x allosome develops into female if sperm carrying y allosome uniting with the egg it would become xy zygote and that zygote would develop into male only this is how sex determination is done i think uh, it is very much clear once this slide is uh, clear to you people hereafter there is no hurdle in understanding remaining three mechanisms of sex uh, determination now we shall move on to the next slide that is to say you xx xo mechanism of sex determination this is almost the same with respect to the female if a zygote carrying xx allosome obviously it would develop into a female and it will be able to produce the ova or the egg of the same type where each egg would carry one x allosome plus one set of autosomes very clear hence it is homogametic whereas another one where the zygote carrying one x allosome and another one without without a y allosome that is said to be like xo would make that zygote to develop into a male only that develops into a male only try to understand though there is no y chromosome it would develop into male only but later on it makes a difference how look at it after attaining sexual maturity such male individual will produce two kinds of sperms like 50 percentage of the sperms produced by that individual would carry x allosome and the remaining 50% of the sperms would carry autosomes without Y allosome. So that finally what happens here, sperm carrying X allosome uniting with the egg would make it to develop into female. Whereas the sperm carrying one set of autosomes but without Y chromosome uniting with the egg carrying X allosomes would develop into male only. But this is not, don't try to observe this phenomenon or this case in case of animals this is in a special case like insects hemipterans and orthopterans will see it in the last slide there is a diagrammatic representation where it would become much more clear to you people and let us move on to the fourth slide third method of sex determination 
this is a jhajjad jhan w method of sex determination here what happens something it is contrasting to the previous two types homogametic what we observed in case of female here it is observed in male and heterogametic what we observed in male previously here it is observed in female let let me explain it firstly jhajjad a zygote carrying a zygote carrying jhad jhad allosomes would develop into male and after attaining sexual maturity such a type of male individual will produce only one type of sperms or one kind of sperms all the sperm each sperm carries one jhad allosome and one set of autosomes so that uh, here it is a case of homogametic whereas uh, another one where the jhad jhad allosomes are not present in a zygote if that zygote carrying one allosome as jhad and another allosome as w then that zygote is made to develop into female it is contrasting to the previous case and here this type of female after attaining sexual maturity will produce two kinds of eggs i mean 50 percentage of the eggs would carry jhad allosome and remaining 50 percentage of the eggs would carry w allosome hereafter sex will be determined at the time of fertilization by considering the type of egg carry i mean egg carrying type of chromosome whether it is a z chromosome or w chromosome for example if the egg carrying z allosome with one set of autosomes uniting with the sperm then it becomes zygote would carry z z allosome it develops into male if the egg carrying w allosome uniting with the sperm having z allosome then that zygote would carry z w allosomes or chromosome complement and this zygote is made to develop into a female as a heterogametic so it depends here female is important in determining sex of the individual in case of z z z w mechanism sex determination whereas x x x y method of sex determination sperms in play an important role in determining sex of the baby or sex of the progeny or offspring okay uh, if this z z z w mechanism of sex determination is clear we shall move on to the next and the last slide last but one slide that is z z z o mechanism of sex determination it is very clear and is the same if the zygote carrying z z allosomes then that zygote is made to develop into a male a male only then if a zygote carrying allosomes as z and absence of w then <coughs> that zygote is made to develop into female after attaining sexual maturity that female would be able to produce two types of eggs one set of eggs or 50% of the eggs would carry the allosome as z and remaining 50% of the eggs would carry the absence of w allosome and only one set of autosomes so this is the fourth method of sex determination and this is observed in some other category of animals and finally this slide gives you overall idea about all the four methods through the diagram it is a diagrammatic representation of four mechanisms of sex determination let me show you here basic that is sex chromosomes is okay and here look at it this is the xx xy method of sex determination whereas one parent that is a female carrying xx allosomes and male carrying xy allosomes and when they produce the gametes look at it female produces x each egg carrying x allosome only whereas when male produces sperms 50 percentage of the sperm means one sperm carrying x and another sperm carrying y and obviously it depends on the type of i mean the sperm carrying type of allosome whether it is x would determine female if it is y it would determine male this is xy xx xy method of sex determination 
Whereas the second type, look at it, absence of uh, Y allosome in the male parent, in the male parent. So female is the same, whereas in the male parent, look at it, the sperms produced by this male parent, one sperm carry X allosome and another sperm carry no Y allosome. You try to understand, really now other in here, Y allosome absent on the health of the one the chromosome kadime and artha bardu because it is a different case in special case of our category of animals we can observe as i said before xx xy method of sex determination we can observe in drosophila we can observe in uh, uh, what is it a lichen you know a lichen whereas uh, xx xy mechanism of sex determination method is observed in case of uh, insects like locust that is grasshopper okay and uh, next one is ZZ and ZW mechanism of sex determination this is one type where this is a female parent carrying ZZ allosomes and this is a male parent carrying uh, sorry uh, this is a male parent carrying ZZ allosomes and uh, this is a female parent carrying ZW uh, allosomes as heterogametic and this is homogametic and uh, the sperms produced by male parent carrying ZZ allosome are all same like each sperm would get the same ZZ allosome whereas a female parent producing half of the X carrying ZZ allosome and remaining half of the uh, X carrying W allosome okay and it depends on what type of egg carrying Z or W allosome would determine gender or sex of the individual and this mechanism is observed in case of uh, fowl you know uh, koli, koli jati birds in case of certain birds uh, this uh, method is uh, valid or this method is uh, employable and the last method that is uh, ZZ ZO method of sex uh, determination ZZ as you all know it is homogametic male parent producing the sperms of the single type where each sperm would carry the ZZ allosome and uh, female parent it is heterogametic as you know before Whereas uh, it produces eggs of two kinds, like one set of eggs would carry Z allosome and another set of eggs would carry no W allosome. Absence of W allosome is referred as O, it is represented as O. And that O or absence of W allosome itself makes it to develop into a female. So this uh, method is employable or valid in certain insects like uh, moths butterflies etc i hope i want to stop here only the reason sex determination mechanism has to be understood by you people first once it is made clear to you people then we can switch over to the next concept that is a special case of xx xy mechanism sex determination in case of uh, drosophila melogaster especially proposed by a person called C.B. Bridges. See you. Please stay well, stay fit and good luck. Thank you.